Joseph. Where the hell is that bloody son of mine? I don't know. Chief of the Dower, I bring you loving greetings from my father, the King of England. He sends you gifts of blankets, guns, rum, and silver. His great wish is to be at peace with all his children. He holds out his hand to you. Warihiyagi, Munda Nadwik. Warihiyagi. The Mohawks call you their brother and trust you as one of their own. I take Kichi Manitou as my witness that while I held the French king by the hand, I held him fast. I take your father, King George, by the hand and I will hold him fast. For the Adawa, the Mingos, the Ojibwa, the Delaware, the Shawnee. This is my truth. Brothers of the Six Nations, Tegarihoga of the Mohawk, Skenandon of the Oneida, Corn Planter of the Seneca, Sachems of the Onondaga, Cayuga, Tuscarora. Witness. This peace between Pontiac and our father, the king. <laughs> Tomorrow we meet here in council together. Mr. Randall. I drink to our father, the king. Give out George. Give us a real Billy! I didn't buy you a damn knighthood so that you could lay every woman in the province of New York. You and your knighthood can go straight to hell. Half the Mohawk Valley will be yours when I'm gone. You can have as many women as you want after you've made the right marriage. Like his father before him. <laughs> Molly Brad, you're a terrible woman. See how they treat me, hurt uh, man. <laughs> yeah, will you, my poor old friend? <laughs> <laughs> Your brother Joseph, the only one who shows me any respect. Because he likes how you take care of his sister. <laughs> <laughs> Why shouldn't we have the right to vote for our own taxes? No taxation without representation. <laughs> Romeo, was she worth it? Ah, uh, Joseph, they all are. Pontiac surrendered. Why should we have to support the whole British Army? Well, you're talking treason, Matthew Randall. Joseph, he's a damn Boston patriot. And you're a Tory son of a... Oh, those eyes. Nah. You stay here. You two can fight over the future. Chief Scanlon's daughter. Oh, there's a match to where my father's ambitious old heart. 
Hyandanaga. Two sticks tied together for strength. I know what it means. My father said the king gave you this. After we fought the French at Ticonderoga. Were you brave, Tayandanaga? At 14, when the cannons fired, my knees shook so hard, I had to hold on to a tree. Now you're a man. Your heart beats fast. Do your knees still shake? Only when I'm in mortal danger. Like now? Back to the Mohawk with me. A man goes to live in his bride's longhouse. You cross your eyes just like an Englishman, Joseph Brandt. Your sister can speak to my mother. If my mother says yes, I'll come to your valley. Get help. <laughs> We've got an account to settle with you, you heathen butcher. <laughs> Ebenezer Cox. Brother. Peace? you to drink as you do until you lose your reason. I wish you not to fight one another. Good words, corn planter. Nail in the Delaware prophet dreamed he went in search of the creator. The master of life took him by the hand and he said, why do you let the whites live on your land? Can you not live without them? Before they came, you needed no guns or powder. Go back to that happy life you lived before the whites came. What? Wear skins and eat roots? We're farmers now. Even you Seneca. The Mohawk live in better houses than most of these Englishmen. Dress finer, too. I'm a good Christian, corn planter. I can read and write English. But I'm an Iroquois first, just like you. Pontiac knew how hungry the English are. How much land they could eat. Pontiac fought and lost. I looked into his eyes, brother. I saw the heart that was there. But now the English are here. And no nation, war chief, or even a prophet will ever drive them out. But your English brothers still fear him. What are you, Hage? We do a line across this land. What is the king's answer? These are the lands of the Mohawk, the Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, Seneca, and Tuscarora. 
The Six Nations drew a line here. From here at Fort Stanwix, south on the Delaware, west on the Susquehanna, south on the Allegheny, and then south down the Ohio to the Tennessee. Our father, the king, has accepted this line. The Mohawk keep their lands here. All other lands to the east will be paid for by the king. All lands to the west of the line will be yours and your children's. When this treaty of Fort Stanwix is signed, the Six Nations will be paid for their generosity in silver. Joseph, what's that bloody parson up to? I say they're not being paid enough for their lands. They're my Indians. And... Your Indians? You psalm singing son of a bitch, they're my Indians. I'm the goddamn Indian superintendent. I take my orders from the Presbyterian Kirk of Boston. It is God's word that I you heed. You sanctimonious hypocrite. You want to kill this treaty so that your Boston friends can pick up some Indian land. And how many acres have you bought from the Mohawk? With your trinkets and your rum, you... Joseph. See the Reverend Mr. Kirkland back on his way to Boston before I break his stiff neck. The Mohawk Gospel we translated. I had it bound when I was in Boston. Thank you. Kirkland... May it lead you back to the ways of your true father above, and away from the path that evil man has set for you. My people sold land to Sir William. The man who keeps your sister as his mistress... As his wife. He loves her just as the Mohawk love him. They know the road is always open to Johnson Hall. And no Indian will leave there hungry or poor. He has proved himself their brother. Loyalty misplaced can be a dangerous thing. By this belt, in the name of our father, the great King of England, on behalf of his American subjects, I renew and confirm the covenant chain between us, strengthening it, rubbing off any rust so that it may shine brightly as proof to all nations of our love and friendship, firm and unshaken. Warahiyagi signs this treaty for his father, George III, King of England, Scotland, Ireland, and the plantations of America. Erika Hoga signs for the Mohawk. Corn planter signs for the Seneca. Signs for the Oneida.
has murdered our brother Pontiac! girl in the town of New York. Oh, and to my son. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky dog. Happiness and a long life. Happiness and a long life. ago you told me of a dream you had, of a gift that I made to you of a fine red British coat. I dreamed it, brother, a coat as bright as yours. Oh, no, brighter! <laughs> I had a dream last night, brother. I dreamt you gave me all the bottom land down by the Canada Johari Bridge. The land is yours, brother. But I will never dream with you again. We need our own committee for public safety. A committee for public safety and our own armed militia to protect the patriots in this valley. Protect you from what, Cox? From all the Indians he swindled out of their land. The damn British army. And their Tory friends. British soldiers died to protect you and your patriots from the French and from Pontiac's war parties. John, we should, we should have the right to vote for our own taxes, elect our own governor. As free Englishmen. No gang of Boston radicals is going to run this colony. Who made you and your Tory father the government here? We hold the King's Commission. An Irish drunk who bought a knighthood for his bastard son. And then tear your head off! Oh, John! John! Fox! Get your hands off me, Brent! You and your squaw sister can kiss these Tories all you like. Any white man who foul his home with an Indian squaw. Come, Isaac. Easy, easy, easy. Sorry. You're not welcome at Johnson Hall, Cox. Herkimer! I've heard enough politics for today. He has a foul mouth. He talks treason. William, if the king doesn't bow to the people's righteous demands... He won't. So be warned. This whole valley calls with patriots. They're not all mad dogs like Cox. Where do the Mohawks stand? Well, they stand for themselves in the Six Nations. 
This valley belonged to us before the Dutch came, never mind the English. You are loyal to the king. As long as he's loyal to us. Look, my son, I's run that, run! I know, I said, go! go. <laughs> Judge and Albany says different. Judge us, you Tory dogs! And you what? Oh, you you what? You almost killed my son! The law. What's happening here, Joseph? Your friends here have just given us a taste of the liberty and justice you patriots are always talking about. The Mohawks have sided with Sir William Joseph, with the king. And if we side with the patriots, Herkimer, will my land be safe from Eben Cox? I got a legal writ that says that you Indians ought to be off my land. No! Get your committee of public safety off my land. Get off my land! We'll be back! But the Mohawk lands were guaranteed at Fort Stanwyck seven years ago. Joseph, I have written to the governor. Will the governor stop Cox and the committee of public safety? You have the king's word. And the governor's word and your word. There are riots in Boston and New York. If the Patriots here rise, the governor will be too busy defending Albany to worry about us, his Mohawk children. Oh, damn your eyes. You think that a rabble of Boston radicals and whining farmers can stand against the British government? William! Get some water, quick! No, no, no. You, you better no. rest. Oh, it's nothing. Rest for... It's nothing. Joseph, boy. Then you know I love you like my own flesh and blood? And trust me, you must. These, these patriots, <laughs> like rebellious children, they're of an age to turn on their father, demanding his power, testing his strength. We've all had sons, we've all borne this test, and we have prevailed. And our father, King George, will prevail too. Your, your father is aware of his duty to his other children who who have remained loyal to his crown. We are not the king's children, Wariahage. We are his allies. The, the, the king has written to me asking for a list of his Indian children's grievances. Help me to answer him. Put your faith in him. And wait for his justice. Ask this council to bring me the many grievances felt by your people. I will write a letter to our father, the king. No! This council must send their own ambassador to London to meet King George and his ministers face to face. I am the neighbor. 
You have no right to speak in this council. The Mohawk women have not chosen you as sachem. I beg Skinnendon's pardon. But there will be a war in this colony between the British and the Patriots. This Mohawk Valley, where we first sprang from the earth, built our longhouses, grew the corn. This land will be a battlefield. Now we are the king's allies. He will expect us to fight beside him. But he has made promises to us and his word has not been kept. He begs my pardon and keeps on talking. Uh, that's right. Yes. <laughs> he speaks well, Skenando. <laughs> Who will the Six Nations send to England? The Seneca would choose the High and No! No! He is not a sachem. We can still choose him to represent us. No! You are speaking against your own son-in-law. Where are you going? Where are you going? No, don't shoot. Matt, who's this? Help me get inside. farm. He had that letter hidden in his coat. He must have come across one of Cox's patrols, the same ones I ran into a few miles back. It's from General Gage in Boston. His troops met the Patriot militia at Lexington three days ago. The British were beaten back to Boston. Vermont rebels have taken Fort Ticonderoga. Oh, dear Lord, no. The Patriots are raising an army to invade Canada. I've been ordered to lead my Scottish tenants and all loyal Mohawks to defend Montreal. That's it. It's war. I'm not going. But those are Gage's orders. This is my home. John, the British won't hold Montreal without help. If I leave, Cox will tear this hall down, board and beam. They'll take every acre my father left me. Joseph will leave them. They'll follow him. But it's my command by right. I hold the commission from the Indian department. My family That's has enough, Walter. The council will send you to London as their ambassador. Meet the king as leader of your people and defender of Canada. Give him a victory in Montreal. Meet the king as an ally, not as a beggar. Joseph. I'll go. Thank you, brother. Matt, you better come with us. Cox will be paying you a visit after this. I'm going to take Barbara and the children away from here to her father's farm in Cherry Valley. You'll have to choose, Matt. One side or the other. I say the king is wrong. I believe in the liberty that Herkimer and the others are going to war for. But I can't fight against you or Joseph. The hand of God be with you. Are you afraid? Take us with you. They'll be fighting in Montreal. As soon as I can get a ship, I'll be sailing for England. I'll be safer in your father's village. My father talks for Kirkland and his Boston friends. He says the Patriots have right on their side, that the Mohawks are in the king's pocket. I think your father's right. Now I think it's time I put the king in our pocket.
command, Walter! Not a brother, George. General Gage reports the rebel forces have surrounded Boston, fortifying Bunker Hill. My lord, Mr. Joseph Brandt, emissary of the Mohawk people. Captain Brandt. On behalf of His Majesty's government, I welcome you to London. Lord Germain, I bring you a message from the Council of the Six Nations. Brother, the Six Nations have always shown their loyalty to the king. Yet they have been badly treated by his people in the colonies. Unjust claims have been made against our lands. The Treaty of Fort Stanwix has been broken. Our great friend, Sir William Johnson, always assured us that the King and his wise men here in London would give us justice. We ask the Colonial Secretary for that justice. Now. As soon as this rebellion has been put down, Mr. Brandt, your people's every grievance and complaint will be redressed. As the chosen representative of the Six Nations, I ask for a written statement of the King's intentions. I will put your petition before the Privy Council, Mr. Brandt, and in due time will inform you of their response. Really, Lord George, this is too bad of you. All of London awaits the arrival of our King from America. My father's ally in his victorious American campaign. We are winning, are we? Highness, I gladly deliver Captain Brandt into your hands. Gentlemen, bring us a victory and please let it be soon. Father has allowed nothing at breakfast except boiled eggs and spinach since the beginning of your damn war. We must all make sacrifices, Highness. Well, none of you look any leaner. Come along, brother. We shall find some more amusing company. You must be careful, Joseph. Mr. Boswell has been known to write the truth on occasion. Thank you, Your Highness. And London, Mr. Brand. What has impressed you most? The ladies. <laughs> and the horses. <laughs> Mr. Brandt, you are convinced of the justice of the King's war against the American colonies? I came here to satisfy myself on the right and wrong of this war. How many men could you put in the field should you decide that... Thousands! <gasps> Thousands? Mr. Boswell, you are disturbing the pose. Not today. He's seen it. Have you ever been to a mass ball, Joseph? You haven't, have you? Well, we shall have one. What do you think of that, ladies? In your honour. Genius. I love it more than anything you've ever done. Come along, Joseph. Your guests are waiting.
heart beating in your savage breast, eh? Come along, let me pass. see you. Mr. Brandt. Lord Germain, I've come for the Privy Council's answer. I've waited six months. I want to go home. I gave you an assurance that your people would receive the King's justice. The King's justice. God help us, I've seen your King's justice. What the devil do you mean? If the Six Nations fight on the King's side in this war, if we fight beside you, you may win. Your people have sworn loyalty. If we fight against you, with the Patriots, you will lose. <laughs> the King of the Mohawks will need no help from any painted heathen savages to put down these damned American rebels. A ragtag rabble of farmers and smugglers against the greatest army in the world, the army that has put the British flag on every continent around the globe. General, we taught those ragtag farmers how to fight. The tricks they learned from us helped your great army take Canada from the French. If you want to keep America, you'll need us painted savages. We're the only thing alive that scares the hell out of those damned Americans. I think I've made my point. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, be good enough to take the general out for a breath of air. trust the Americans. I don't trust you either. Which devil should the Six Nations bargain with? When the final spark of this rebellion is ground out, every loyalist may be sure of His Majesty's favor and protection. His Majesty's favor? What does that mean? Give me straight answers, Germain. How are you going to win this war? General Howe in New York and Burgoyne in Canada will drive together and crush George Washington's rabble between them. How many guns are you going to give us? A musket for every man and enough powder and shot to win the war. Blankets, rum... And after, when the war is won. I give you my oath in the King's name that no white man will be allowed to settle across the Ohio and that all treaties made between the Six Nations and the Crown will be upheld. I will put the King's generous offer before the Council of the Six Nations. They will speak for my people. In a Patriot jail. Yeah, well, I'll be back. I love. Go. Oh. 
When you want Herkimer. We've come for Sir John, Molly. With a congressional order for his arrest. He's not here. Molly, kindly ask Sir John to step out here. Please. He's nowhere in the house. Damn it! He must have made it to the river. Lady Mary, I'm taking you into custody. On what charge? Treason and conspiracy. You and your children will be lodged with Governor Colden at Albany. We're holding you responsible for them, Nicholas. Let's take the squaw, too. <laughs> there wouldn't be a white face left alive in this valley. Molly is free to go. This house and all estates of the Johnson family are confiscated by congressional order. to us from London. Some friends in Boston sent it on. You made good use of it? Skin and all. The English prince gave me this foolish name. And I used it to get what I wanted from the king. I did what the council sent me to do. I'm here for Nigan, father. You are too late. She waited all winter for you. Grew weaker as the months passed. As the snow melted, she coughed up her blood and died. It was the consumption, Joseph. We buried her near my church. Father! Father! Isaac! Mother gave it to me. Don't go away. What is it, Pa? When, in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. The Americans have asked us not to fight in this war. Benjamin Franklin has planned their government as a great council like ours. The Congress at Philadelphia have planted a pine tree, our symbol of law and peace, in front of their meeting house. The Americans promised to let you live in peace, but they burned my farm and many others. They stole Johnson Hall from our brother, John Johnson, took away his wife, his children. The British promised us justice and guns as their allies. I ask this council to hear the king's words. When this war is over, the Six Nations will keep their lands. The Seneca have no wish to fight on either side in this war. But we remember the covenant chain and the treaty we signed at Fort Stanwix ten years ago. 
We are allies with the British. It is the Americans who crossed the Ohio and broke the line that we drew. When the British and the French first fought their wars here, our wise grandfathers sat in council and decided not to shed their blood in the whites' quarrel. They remained neutral and lived to trade with the winning side. Franklin, Jefferson, and the other patriots are great men. We have nothing to fear from them. They talk sweetly now because they need our help. When the British are gone, they will steal our lands, our farms. They will wipe the six nations off the face of this earth. If we stand together now, fight beside the British, with British guns, we can defeat them. And Anega, you make a good argument. But you can see the voice of this council is not for war. Until we meet again, the six nations will keep the peace. Mark my words, all of you! You'll have to take up the axe and fight. Wait too long and you'll have no confederacy left to defend. wants to know. James Park, Mr. Brandt, from up the Delaware. Oh. Alexander Westbrook, neighbor of mine. Henry Hoff, Albany. Judge Barnhart, County of Ulster. We heard you raised the flag. You're in good time for breakfast. There's men out of every county, from the Hudson to the Susquehanna. Been cursed, spied on, beat up, whipped and robbed. Their neighbours say they're not patriot enough. Me, they tarred and feathered. My skin came off with a pitch. Committee of Public Safety threw me in prison. Sold off my farm, everything I had. What about your families? My wife took the boys and went home to Virginia. Her people inclined to the patriot side. My mother's better off without me there, neighbors being what they are. We've been hiding out in the woods for months, eating whatever we could catch, living on the hope that we'd get a chance to strike a blow back at these damn patriots. Liberated after the Battle of New York. God save the king! <laughs> the captain. The high and the nigger. Take down this flag. You and these men leave this village now. see no reason to stay. Let's go. Thank you. 
Transformers with Top Punk, Ryan Sultiki, their lovely cows have got away with French free volunteers. French free volunteers, me lads. Corn and wheat. Take it all with us. You men are free to go. You can tell George Washington his army will stay hungry long as Joseph Brandt's on the frontier. Visit, Captain. General Burgoyne is marching south from Canada to take Albany. I'm ordered to gather the Six Nations at Fort Oswego to meet the Colonel of the newly commissioned King's Royal Regiment of New York. Who? John Johnson. <laughs> Friends in Albany are trying to help her escape. I'll have no child of mine held under an American guard. United didn't come. Reverend Kirkland advised against it. Corn planter brought the Seneca. Will they fight? You see, the king has kept his word. You were right, brother. The British are richer than the Americans. <laughs> this council's vote is not for war. Joseph! Catherine! What's wrong? Molly sent me to warn you. Herkimer and the militia will ambush you in the road to Fort, Fort Stanwix. They should be halfway to Riskany by now. Oh, Riskany? Senecas! Brothers! The Six Nations Council is happy to sit and watch the Redcoats and the Americans fight their war between them. I want peace, like any man. I have a son. I want to see him grow. But I will fight, because our future depends on the outcome of this war. Tomorrow, our brother John Johnson leads his troops to kill Americans. You have guns? Will you leave the fighting to your friends? Will the Seneca take their presents and go home? Or will you fight?
Six Nations by the American General Schuyler. Join us now, Schuyler asks. Help us defeat the British tyrants. Skin and all. The Mohawk and the Seneca have already lost brave men in the battle against these Americans. We will keep hold of the Covenant chain and fight with the king. We'll hold to the chain and fight beside the British. The Cayugas will stand by the elderly brothers and the British. The Seneca choose Kayan Gunta as war chief. Only four of our nation have called for war. This council cannot speak unless we all agree. The Mohawk give their voice to Sky and Gonta. Let this council send war belts to the Odawa, the Ojibwa who fought with Pontiac, the Miamis, the Mingos, the Delaware, the Shawnee, all the nations from here to the Mississippi. Tell them now is the time. Join us against the Americans. This council, this council cannot call for war unless all six nations take up the hatchet. The Oneida have given their word to the Americans. If we take up the axe, we will fight against the British. The Tuscarorans will fight for the Americans. Brothers, you will break apart this longhouse. Let it break, then. Let the Tuscarora and the Oneida fight with their American brothers. <laughs> Kettle is broken. The Six Nations are no more. After 500 years of peace, the Six Nations will fight each other for the whites. Skinnadon will live to curse the day he trusted the Americans. What is it these whites see in us? What weakness that makes us their followers even turns us against ourselves. A people too proud to be led. The whites follow leaders because they are weak. Our people follow their own paths, which makes them strong. The council has chosen Sky and Ganta. I will follow him with my volunteers. Skinnanton says that the French will fight with the Americans. You'll kill them all. I'll fight like my father did when he was a boy. A little body Catherine, help your old uncle to his blanket. The old man will be gone soon. Your power and council will die with him. There is no more council. The fire is out. The fire can be lit again. I broke the Confederacy. I tore the longhouse apart. Then put us back together, brother. Catherine will be choosing the next to Karahoga. Marry her. I'm not looking for a new wife. Are you going to mourn the first one forever? You need the power of the woman's council. Marry Catherine. Take that power that she holds. Use it to save the Six Nations. Lead. know me. I'm Captain Walter Butler, Butler's Rangers. I have good cause to hate all patriots. 
They sentenced me to hang in Albany. I spent a year in chains there. And I mean to repay every hour of that year in rebel blood. By order of General Carlton, this attack on Cherry Valley is under my sole command. We serve Captain Brandt. Mr. Joseph Brandt has no rank here. And you damn hedge robbers will follow my orders, or I'll see you hung as rebels and deserters. You can go straight to hell, Captain. Walter, listen. Get your hands off me. I require your services as a translator only. Get ready to move out on my command. Indian files, march! Let him have Cherry Valley. We can raid over by German flats. I have friends at Cherry Valley. Matt Randall and his family. I'll need you two to help me. Hoff, take these men to German flats. We'll meet you in two weeks. Let's go. The Indians will move down through the pasture and raid the settlement. I'll take my rangers up along the ridge. We'll attack the fort. Walter, these Seneca's lost brothers at Oriskany. The day of vengeance is at hand. Give them an order to spare the women and children. This is not your command, Joseph. You heard my orders! We gotta get there first. Where do they live? The Randalls? I don't know.
been slaughtered? You're heathens! You're savages! Your command, Captain. Your orders, remember? I wasn't even here. I was at the fort. You damn Indians! <laughs> Arrest him! Hang him! the great Jehovah to witness our sorrow at your loss, at the losses of all our fellow Americans at Cherry Valley, and our sorrow and anger at the losses of all patriots beset by the British tyrants and the savages they employ. Gentlemen, Mr. Randall has lost his beautiful wife and his two beloved children massacred at the hands of the Mohawks and the Seneca. Mr. Randall, was that redskin traitor Joseph Brandt at Cherry Valley? Our information is that Brandt and the Tory Walter Butler directed the massacre. General, how short of corn and beef are these frontier raids going to leave our army? There's scarcely a working farm left west of the Hudson. Gentlemen, the American people have risen up in their righteous wrath and demanded an end to this terror. Across these 13 colonies, they cry for vengeance. Vengeance in the name of patriots like Matthew Randall. I have given General John Sullivan four brigades, 4,500 men, from the Susquehanna north to Seneca Lake, from Cayuga Lake west to the Genesee River. Every Indian town and hamlet to be laid waste, every ear of corn burned, every animal destroyed. Any savage who resists is to be hanged. He will raise every barn, every cabin, every longhouse, every blade of grass. The Indian is to be destroyed. Rise up, Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered. Let them flee before me. So Tyrant of Britain and scourge of mankind, the Almighty to whom vengeance belongs pours forth his righteous indignation in due time.
you going? Sailing for Montreal. Mary's there. Friends in Albany helped her escape. Is she well? She's well. There are nearly 2,000 of my people here. More coming every day. We need food and blankets. Joseph, there aren't enough stores here to feed the Niagara garrison. My men won't fight if their families aren't fed. There's a French fleet off the coast of Virginia. Holland and Spain have joined the Americans against us. There's talk of a peace conference in Paris. Peace conference? I'd say it's over, brother. Get yourself to Quebec as soon as you can. Before your father, the king, trades you for the West Indies. What does he mean, it's over? Oh, here, here, take it. Hurry, take it. Here, take as much as you can. Come on, let's have ya. Hey! <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Dirty little bleeder stealing from the stores. That squaw there helping... The lady, me. Private, is a clan matron of the Mohawk. Oh, my regrets, lady. Oh, please, Mr. Brand, Captain... Get back to your post. Whole nation of thieves. Who were they, Catherine? The boys who stole... I only saw one. We took food. Our people are dying. This. It helps me forget that my father feasts with the British army while his people starve. <laughs> turned white enough to beat your own child? Is that what they say about me? Some do. can lead the Six Nations alone. There are no kings among the Mohawks. Listen to me. The king will protect our rights when he talks peace with the Americans. I will go to Quebec. Enough! No more promises! Your 
England's brothers are running like rabbits. you, the great, proud Iroquois people. We're starving to death. We have no food, no land, and no homes. And you led us to this. I have no father. Isaac! I have no father! Isaac! I have warned London, Captain Brandt, that both the present suffering and the uh, situation of your people will have to be dealt with. You're not an Englishman, General. No. I'm a Swiss. I have served in many armies. And I'm to put my trust in you. I'm a soldier, not a politician. A soldier? You've drawn a border and given away the forts that defend it. Oswego, Niagara, Detroit! Put my people on that border, and we'll stop the Americans when they come. And they will come, General. You want to keep this colony alive? Give us the Grand River. Put us here. Moses, you brought us to a new homeland. Not all of us. Isaac will be back. Your son will be here. Six miles deep from each side of the river, beginning at Lake Erie and extending in that proportion to the head of said river. Which they and their posterity are to enjoy forever. Signed, Frederick Haldeman, Governor. Joseph! Joseph! The river winds just like the Mohawk near Kanayuhari. The women are pleased. We'll build our house over there. Look. <laughs> It's Johnson Hall. Brant's Hall. Brant's Ford. What's that? It's as heavy as a horse. I had a cast in Quebec for the church we'll build. Listen. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Matt? Like a word with you in private, Joseph. Catherine, you've met Matthew Randall? I'm Congressional Commissioner for Indian Affairs now. President Washington invites you to meet with him confidentially in Philadelphia. What's on his mind? Peace. We have peace. You won your war, we lost everything. There's no peace down in the Ohio, Joseph, not with women and children being murdered and settlements being burned by your western tribes. Your settlers were trespassing on Indian land. The Stanwicks Treaty and all other agreements signed by the British Crown are null and void. They're scraps of paper. Joseph, you made a good deal for your people here. Help us make peace in the West. Take Washington's offer to the western tribes. Will you come?
We have great respect for the Six Nations, Captain Brandt. Your great council inspired our own democracy. So I've been told. Thank you. Americans will settle the West. Now, of course, public opinion is against further war with the Indians, but unless your Western brothers bury the hatchet, Congress will be forced to send an army across the Ohio and wipe them out. Brandy. At first, you'd like to offer them the hand of friendship. My father-in-law, Scanondon, the sachem of the Oneida, he took your friendly hand. His village has now been torn down into the dust. A New York land company is buying up all his people's farms. Your own land company has plans for the Shawnee, I heard. Do you know what we call you, Mr. President? Run of the goddess. Town destroyer. And you call us wolves. Savages. But when I was in London, I saw children in the streets starving. Killing each other. For the scraps from his majesty's table. Men jailed because they could not pay their debts. And then I looked into your palaces and prisons. Do you know what I saw? A deformed piece of the earth. That's England, Mr. Brandt. The old world. We're building a new country here. Our constitution, inspired by your own, guarantees every man the freedom... There are women for sale down in the corner. None of them are Indian yet. We have not learned to whip our children. We have no money, no banks, and no jails. We have no need of presidents or kings. You see, sir, we're plain uncivilized. There aren't any more six nations, Mr. Brent. That's all finished. There aren't four nations, or three, or two. Just one. The United States of America, a new country on the edge of a new century. And the 19th century is going to be American. One nation, under God, indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Your race will either join our world, Mr. Brandt, or it will die. Are you going to put that in writing, Mr. President? George Washington, with one voice, as one people, you must build a new confederacy with all the nations from Florida to Canada, from the Niagara to the Mississippi. Who leads? You? If you fight divided, the Delaware here, the Shawnee there, the Americans will eat us up, one tribe at a time. If you kill a hundred, Washington will send a thousand soldiers after you. They believe they are one nation with a destiny to rule over our land, rule over us. Can you put away your pride and fight together as one people? Can you forget your ancient rivalries? Can you be led to victory? How many warriors are there between here and the Mississippi? If they all take up the hatchet together, no American force can stand against us. Please. 
keep the peace now. Until a new confederacy is built. Then we will face the Americans. At a place and a time we choose. We will force a peace. But on our own terms. Peace? Time was when you roused us to war. You said if ever a blow was struck against one of us, all the nations would join in revenging it. Where are your young men? Uncles of the Six Nations. Now is the time for vengeance. Some of us are here, ready for war. Isaac. Isaac, help me stop them. No love left for you.